We're continuing our work on coding in Python for economics. And so if you want to calculate the price elasticity or the elasticity of demand, you can do so in Python. The workbook that we're going to be working through is at drstephpowers.github.io slash econ dash in dash Python. And you'll find a link to this GitHub in the description for this video, as well as the top of the screen. Once you are here, we are going to go to the worksheet called Price Elasticity. So we're going to click on this one here. And it's going to bring up our worksheet. To code along in Python, we want to open in Collab. So there's a little icon that should be here at the top of your screen. If it doesn't show up, just click on the space where it should be, uh, and it should take you uh, to the file. So we are opening up a uh, Python coder that's in Google Drive. And so if you want to be able to run the code, you will need to sign in to your own Google account. So make sure you sign in. And if you want to be able to tweak the code, write your own, you need to make sure to copy it to your drive. This gives you a copy that's in your Google Drive and it's yours to do with as you wish. So I'm actually going to switch over to the other screen where I have already signed in. And we're going to be using the midpoint method for calculating elasticity. We're actually using uh, data from the previous example, the previous videos, if you've checked those out. And so just show you graphically here, this was from the graphing supply and demand video. And here we have, we graph demand, it was downward sloping, it's that orange that you see there. So we can see that when prices go up, the amount that people are willing and able to buy, that quantity demanded is less. And when prices go down, the amount people are willing and able to buy goes up. So we have a downward sloping demand curve. The key, what we want to know now is elasticity of demand. So do we have a steep demand curve or a flatter demand curve? That tells us how sensitive people are to price change. When you change the price, does the amount that people are willing and able to buy change a lot? So we have a flatter demand curve, or does it change very little? So we have a steeper demand curve and we have inelastic demand. So we're using the midpoint method to find the elasticity of demand. Elasticity of demand is calculated as the percentage change in quantity divided by the percentage change in price. So you change the price, by a certain percent, say 1% change in price, how much does it change the quantity demanded? Now, elasticity of demand, as we said, is really tied to the demand curve. So because when price goes up, quantity demanded goes down, elasticity of demand is negative. They move in opposite directions. So often what happens is we take out that negative or we take the absolute value, we ignore that, to simply look at how much does the quantity change when we change the price. To find the elasticity of demand, we're going to use a method called the midpoint method. The midpoint method picks two points and it looks at the change between the two. And so if we're looking at a demand curve, for example, we take the two extremes, the quantity at the highest price, the quantity at the lowest price, and by doing this calculation, we're essentially finding the elasticity at the middle of the curve. So our elasticity of demand formula is the second quantity minus the first. So how much change in quantity is there? And we're going to divide by the average of the quantity. So Q2 plus Q1 divided by two. This gives us a percentage change in quantity by looking at those two extremes versus the average. And we divide that by the percentage change in price, which we're estimating here by looking at the two extremes in prices, P2 minus P1, and dividing it by the average. So we take P2 plus P1 and divide by two. We're gonna take that absolute value or we're gonna ignore the negatives because it's always gonna be negative if you have a downward sloping demand curve. And if we get a number that's greater than one, we have elastic demand. You change the price even a little bit, quantity demanded changes a lot. If you get a elasticity coefficient, 
that is between zero and one, then you are changing the price a little bit and quantity is changing a little bit. So we have inelastic demand. To do this in Python, we first import numpy as np. This is the package that lets you do math. And so we need to make sure we can have math here. And then the next thing we're gonna do is create a definition. You create a definition so that you can call it later with different numbers. So by defining elasticity of demand, by essentially putting in the formula for elasticity of demand, then with all kinds of different quantities and prices, we can have it calculate that elasticity of demand for us. So you create a definition, so you only have to write the formula once, and then you can put all kinds of different numbers in there and look at the new elasticity. So here we have defined, and we're gonna call it ELAS, just for elasticity, and our inputs, so when we call this definition in the future, we need to give two quantities, Q1 and Q2, and we need to give the price, price one and price two. And then you'll notice here we have our formula. It's the same formula we saw above, Q2 minus Q1, all grouped together in parentheses, divided by, and then we have our Q2 plus Q1 divided by two, all that in parentheses, and then we divide them, so we group that together, so that's some extra parentheses, and then we're gonna divide by that percentage change in price, so we have P2 minus P1 in parentheses, divided by the average, so P2 plus P1 divided by two in parentheses, and because we wanna do all the price calculation and all the quantity calculation, separate and then divide them, you'll see the extra parentheses that are grouping them together. And then as I noted just a couple minutes ago, because elasticity of demand or price elasticity is always negative if you have a downward sloping demand curve, I put in here an ABS that finds the absolute value. It simply just takes out the negative. And then it's going to return the elasticity of demand, your calculation. So I'm gonna run that definition. And once you have run that definition, then you can call it with different values. So for example, let's assume that the quantity is 80 when the price is $2. So at a low price, lots of people are willing and able to buy. Then when the price goes up to $10, so P2 is 10, then people are not willing, cost too much. They're not able, can't afford it. And so the quantity drops. And here we have at P2, we have a quantity of 10. So to find the elasticity coefficient, we simply call that definition, E-L-A-S, and we give it our Q1 of 80, our Q2 of 10, our P1 of 2, and our P2 of 10, and we run it. And we get an elasticity coefficient of 1.16. So notice it's greater than 1. And so we have what type of demand? Elastic, right? So if we go back up, if we have a number greater than one, we have elastic demand. You change the price, the quantity demanded changes a lot, and we can see that change here. So you can try putting in another, a different number. So for example, we could say instead of the quantity dropping to 10 when the price goes to 10, you could say, okay, well, what if the price, what if the quantity drops to 25? And you can run it again, and notice now, we have less of a change in quantity for that same change in price, and the elasticity coefficient has dropped. Now it's 0.79. Unit elasticity is when the elasticity of demand equals one. So it's not elastic or inelastic. At that point, a 1% change in price creates a 1% change in quantity demanded. If your elasticity is greater than one, like we saw before when this was 10 here, we have an elasticity coefficient here of 1.17, which tells you a 1% change in price causes a 1.17% change in quantity. If we go back, Though I don't remember what the number was before, so let's just make it a different number. How about 40 here? Uh, this one here tells you that a 1% change in price 
causes a 0.5% change in quantity. So notice here we have inelastic demand. The quantity change is not as big as the change in price. All right, so here we have prices and quantities. And let's find, let's find the elasticity. So instead of just giving it the numbers here, what if we have a table or a graph? So we have our prices, we have our quantity demanded. And we can see here that when the price is 50, quantity demanded is 124. When the price is 10, quantity demanded is much higher at 193. Well, we want the highest and the lowest to do our midpoint calculation. So instead of retyping uh, 50 for the price and 10 for the price, we can call this information by using P and then a hard bracket zero. So in Python, the counting starts at zero instead of one. So if we're looking at the placement in terms of which price is the first price, the second price, the third price, uh, in the list here, the first one listed at 50 is going to be place zero. So P zero is 50, we can see that here. And if you want the very last number in your list, then you can say, give me negative one. So that'll then start it at the end. So we can do this here, which means we can calculate our elasticity. So we're calling our definition. And remember, we want Q1 and Q2 from the two extremes of our demand curve. So we're going to have Q1 goes first. So we're going to say, give me Q1, which will be in that first one, and then give me the last Q. Make sure we match these, so Q negative one. And it is uh, capitalized because that's how we capitalized it. Now, we actually defined it as Q sub D, so we need to make sure we are calling Q sub D and not just Q here. So pull, pull the first Q D, sub D, Q, pull the last Q sub D, pull the first price, pull the last price. Okay, and again, we capitalized it before, so it needs to be capitalized here. Because we're simply calling whatever we defined, and so we gave it the name capital P and capital Q sub D, and so we need to make sure we do it that way. So now we just make sure we have all the right number of commas. And here you can see we have an elasticity of 0.33. So what does this mean? Well, it means that our demand is inelastic. So we have here a price change of 1% results in quantity demanded changing by 0.33%. And this would give us quite a steep demand curve, which we could see, we could plot price and quantity demanded using the techniques we learned in our other video. We would simply do import matplotlib.pyplot as PLT, and plt.plot and then pull it. So in fact, let's just do that quick here. We can add a line of code. We can import matplotlib.pyplot. We then need, we'll just take this whole thing here, but then we'll just take out the supply part because this example we're dealing with here does not have that. Okay. So we don't need the supply part, so we'll remove that line. And we don't have supply in the legend, so in fact, we don't even need a legend at this point, so let's just remove it here. Okay, and so here we have our downward sloping demand curve, and a steeper demand curve, more elastic. All right, why does this matter? Well, it matters because you want to know as a company what happens if you raise or lower prices. So what we want to calculate is total revenue. Total revenue is price times quantity. 
and we want to know what happens to total revenue when price increases and your elasticity coefficient is greater than one. Uh, what happens if your elasticity coefficient is between zero and one? So we want to create a formula for total revenue. It's just price times quantity. So let's create a definition. We can call it whatever you want. Here it's total underscore revenue. And the inputs are price and quantity. And we want it to return or give us back the, cal the calculated value of total revenue. So we give it this definition, which means we can now calculate total revenue. And if we go back to the first example, where we had Q1 of 80, Q2 of 10, P1 equals 2, and P2 equals 10. So if we go back to that one, which if you'll recall, had an elasticity coefficient of 1.17. All right, so what happens to the total revenue? Well, when the price was 2, the quantity was 80, so total revenue was 160. And when the price went up to 10, the quantity went down to 10, giving us a total revenue of 100. So notice here we raise the price and total revenue goes down. So if you have an elasticity coefficient greater than one, so you have elastic demand, then the challenge is, is that if you raise the price, you lose customers and your total revenue, that's all the money coming in, goes down. Well, what happens to total revenue when there's a price increase, when your elasticity is inelastic? So between zero and one. So for example, the one we did here, we had an elasticity coefficient of 0.33. What happens to total revenue there when you change your price? So recall we had our prices here and our quantity demanded. So we can pull those and do our total revenue calculation. So let's do total revenue. And we need a price. So let's look at, so we'll go back to our price list here. It went from 50 to 10. So let's pull the last price and then we'll look at what happens when we raise the price. So let's look at P negative one. So we're just pulling from our list of prices, the very last one. And we will then pull the quantity that goes with it. So if I scroll back up here, you can see that when the price was 10, quantity demanded is 193. So let's do that. Okay, it says Q is not defined, right? Because it should be Q sub D, because that's what we called that uh, string of numbers. So let's run that again. Q, oh, and make sure capitalization matters. So Q sub D is all caps here. So I gotta make it sure it's all caps in mine too. So Q sub D. So if you're getting errors, it's usually pretty good about telling you where they came from. So total revenue. At the low price, high quantity is 1930. In comparison, let's add, let's do the same one, total revenue. And we want the price when it goes up, and we want the corresponding quantity that goes with it. So notice here, when we have inelastic demand, you raise the price and the price went from 10 to 50, then the total revenue increased. So if you have inelastic demand for your product, then you can raise the price and it'll bring more money in to your organization. And you can do all these calculations in Python. We're using the NumPy package to help us do math and we're simply creating definitions that we would type into our calculator or type into Excel and then that allows us then to just recall those formulas with new numbers uh, to do additional calculations.